Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? So playing retro consoles that were before your time now, this is a bit of a weird subject because as somebody that was born during the late 90s, I didn't really get to experience 2D gaming that much and 2D gaming was everywhere during the 1970s, 80s and early 90s. I'd say the only experience I've had with 2D gaming back in the day was the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Advance was basically a portable Super Nintendo. And in my opinion, 2D gaming is sort of important. Not because, you know, it was what we had in the past, but because I'd say it has a certain charm to it that you just don't get in 3D games. I mean, let's just take the 80s, for example. In the 80s, you had a wide variety of consoles with a variety of games. I mean, just look at the NES, Master System, ColecoVision, Intellivision, Atari 5200, Bally Astrocade. I think the Atari 2600 has been around since, what, 1977? It, it was discontinued in 1992. So, yeah. Now, I want to talk about the 1980s specifically, because, again, you just get a wide variety of stuff but for now we'll just stick with the nes versus the sega master system now unfortunately the sega master system was sort of overshadowed by the nes and the nes was a big thing since 1985 shit in the 1980s they had nintendo cereal nintendo belts nintendo everything nintendo was just huge in the late 1980s but unfortunately the sega master system came at the wrong time I believe the Sega Master System came out in 1986, if I'm not correct. And with the Sega Master System, you get a huge variety of hidden gems. I mean, you got Fantasy Stars, you can see right now, you got Space Harrier, Alex Kidd, Double Dragon, Shinobi, Treats of Rage. All of these great games on the system that was overlooked when it first launched. And at least in my opinion, that's a bit of a shame. I feel like these consoles should be experienced because it's, you know, a bit of gaming history. You know, without the ColecoVision, the Bally Astrocade, the Atari 5200, Magnavox Odyssey, we, we wouldn't have a PS5 or an Xbox Series X or a Nintendo Switch. In my opinion, I feel like the best way to experience these consoles is to get the real thing. But of course, for everybody, that's not possible. They may not have the space and they may not have the money. So I feel like the vast majority are going to experience these consoles through emulation, but with emulation you sort of miss, you know, the context. With emulation you just kind of see a shitty game with two buns and a d-pad. But if you play the real thing, you actually get to, you know, experience the real thing. Of course, none of this is going to be really perfect because, you know, we're not really in the 1980s anymore. But I do feel like these consoles should be given, you know, a chance at the end of the day. Like, see me, I, I have a real NES. Eventually, I do want to get a Master System, but of course, having the physical thing isn't perfect either. I mean, the NES can be real finicky. But either way, though, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to like, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, no rush, and comment down below. What do you prefer, the NES or the Sega Master System? Tell me down in the comments, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.